And now nature's coming to let us understand that. How could it be that thousands of years ago these commentators said that the creation was energy, changed into matter, and the clock formed matter out of the energy? That's when the clock began. I don't know how they figured it out. They see it in the text. They're always digging it out of the text. Now, but then we go on and we, and we have these six days leadings, looking forward from the beginning. So when I brought this fossil home, my youngest daughter, Hannah, she's now, she's now considerably older, and then she was seven years old, she said, Abba. Abba means? Anyone know what Abba means? Abba. Yeah, daddy. It's a diminutive daddy. She said, Abba, Abba. A dinosaur fossil in our house? How can you ever, it's 150 million years old, Abba, get it out of the house. The Bible says the world is 6,000 years old. How can we have a Bible, how can we have a dinosaur fossil in our house? Well, I threw it out of the house. No, that's not what I did. I said, you know, Hannah, maybe there's something subtle, something quiet going on. And if you look at Psalm 90, Psalm 90, verse 4, it's something extraordinary is written. Psalm 90, verse 4, says... Ki elav shenim be'enecha, ki yom et mol ki avar, for ashmoral balayla, for a thousand years in your sight, or like a day that passes, like yesterday, or like a watch in the night. A thousand years in your sight, or like a day that passes, like a watch in, your ni in the night. Psalm 90, verse 4. And I said to Hannah, maybe time back here was different. Proverbs, ta Psalms talks about it already, that maybe there was something different in time. But then, we go deeper. That was good for when Hannah was seven years old. But then you get deeper and deeper into biblical studies, and we find that the ancient commentators come to the end of Genesis chapter day one. There was evening and morning day one, and they define the word day. It's in every major commentary. What's amazing is every major Hebrew commentary, with no exception, that defines the duration of the day says the same thing. It says the following. The text says yom. Yom is the Hebrew word for day, and it means day. That the days are 24 hours each. For those of you who might be into some ancient biblical commentary, these commentators are the Talmud, Rashi, and Nachmanides. Every major commentator, with no exception, says Yom, day, 24 hours. Had the Bible wanted to say that the days were eras, there's a enough Hebrew biblical words to say that. Because although there are the, the lexicon, the number of words, the number of different words in the Bible is fairly small, it's not like these huge dictionaries that go from wall to wall. The, the, biblical Hebrew has several words for the passage of time, like yom, day, like tkufa, ona, moed, meaning indeterminate periods of time. But the Bible chose day, these commentators tell us, because it meant 24 hours each. But they continued, but they continued, they contain all the ages of the universe. And that they learned from two sentences. These are the generation, Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth in the day that God made them. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth in the day that God made. Wait, what's going on here? How do I get generations out of a day? And then again in chapter 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created Adam. This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created Adam. How do you get generations in a day? It's generations or it's a day. I mean, can't, it's bad enough I got the sun on day four. I mean, the Bible should get it right this time. How do you get generations in a day? And then it comes along Albert Einstein, the same person who taught us that energy and matter are two forms of the same thing and discovered for the world that indeed generations and a day may pass in the same time. That viewing a day from a, a series of events from one perspective may have it appear as a day, and viewing it from another's perspective may have it appear as generations, and they both pass in the same time. And I'll give you an example of, of the, the subtlety of this. Uh, it happened in our house several years ago when Hadass, my oldest daughter, now she's doing national service working with disturbed children. Uh, men do three years in the army, then if you're an officer, you do two, one, one or two extra years, and women do one or two years of national service if they, they can choose to be in the army also. Hadass, my oldest daughter, is doing national service. But Hadassi was younger then, she was just 11. 
And we're talking about different ages and the age of the universe and the universe and how there could be billions of years and days. And we, we got to the point of Einstein's understanding that there can be, within a day, a, a long period of time. And we conjured up, we made believe a make-believe planet where time was so stretched out that time was just passing very slowly there that while on the planet only three minutes would go, go by, just three minutes, on the Earth, two years would go by. We have three minutes on the planet, two years on the Earth. And Hadassi said, yeah, it's amazing, Albert. I mean, there really can be such a place where three minutes will go by up there and only on two years on the Earth? I said, yeah, and these places have to exist, not in the solar system, but elsewhere in the universe they do exist. So I said to Hadassi, and Hadassi said to me, if I should say, Abba, that's great. Send me to that place where only three minutes go by. I'll spend three minutes on that planet. I'll do two years worth of homework. Because two years go around. I come back home, no homework for two years. <laughs> Was Hadassi correct? If he gets to the planet where three minutes go by, and two years go by on the Earth, Hadassi was 11 when she went, all her friends were 11. Anyone have an idea how much homework we should get done? Three how much? Three, three minutes worth of homework, right. Now when Hadass comes back, she left when she was 11, how old will she be? 11 and three minutes. How old will her friends be? 13. Hadass will be 11, her friends will be 13. Hadass will have lived out, three, lived out three minutes, her friends will have lived out two years, and both will have happened in the same time. And that's the heritage of Albert Einstein and the reality of our amazing universe. That the passage of time, that gravity, velocity, the expansion of the universe actually stretches out the perception of time. And that's just the way the world is. Like gravity makes the pen fall down, it also affects the flow of time. We have no problem with gravity affecting weight. Right? I get up in the morning, I weigh myself on the scale 150 pounds. I pick up my scale, zip over to the space center, off into space, and I get to the moon. I take out the same scale, step it on the scale. Do I weigh 150 pounds on the moon? No, about 25 pounds. Why? Jane Fonda the whole way up. Really, aerobics, I really work off those calories, huh? Is that why I only weigh 25 pounds on the moon? No, why not? Oh, you mean, but I'm the same size. You mean gravity affects the weight of mass? Yeah, gravity affects the weight of mass. It does the same thing to time, but not so extraordinarily, not so, not so dramatically that you can feel it. The reason that no one has a problem with the same big belly, you know, weighing 150 pounds up on the moon, but only weighing 25 pounds on the moon, is because on the Earth we feel that effect. When you get into an elevator, the elevator pushes up on your feet, and for an instant, if, to your feet, it feels like you weigh a little bit more because it's pressing up more weight. You go on a water slide, you get wet and wild, whoop, and you go down, I don't weigh anything for a second, right? And your mind records that information, and it knows that it can sense that sometimes you weigh differently depending upon what your environment is. It, the same thing is happening to time, but such minute, minute amounts of time that your brain can't pick it up. So it can never iterate, it can never record this information so that, you're, so that you can feel it intuitively. That's why it took an Albert Einstein to discover the fact that time varies from place to place in the universe. We look forward in time and see, or the Bible looks forward in time and claims six days went by, six 24-hour days, but that contain all the ages, means all the ages of the universe. Contain all the ages of the universe. And Einstein told us how it could happen. And Hadass, my daughter, discovered it for herself by going to a planet for three minutes. Had she looked down on the Earth from that planet with her binoculars, she would say, Abba, get to a doctor. Drrr, your heart is going drrr, like that. Because in one of her minutes, we would live out about 300,000 minutes. We would do 300,000 minutes worth of work, learning about the wonders of life. Oranges would ripen, you know, <coughs> have harvest seasons, etc. And to Hadassi, it would be like a video on super fast forward, zoop. If I looked up at Hadass and her planet, where only three minutes were going to go by in our two years, I would see her heart go. Is Hadass, you hibernating up there? She said, no, no, my heart's just fine. One beat a second, you know, 60 a minute. What's the problem, Dad? Abba. And we'd both be correct. You see this difference only when you're looking over vast reaches of the cosmos. And that's what the Bible does. There was evening and morning, day one. The Bible says day one, Yom Echad, because the Bible sees time looking forward in time. We don't have that option. We look back in time. 
but science has opened the doors, pulled back the curtain on the mystery of time. Not necessarily the mystery of creation, but the mystery of time. And told us, and told us, that as you view information from this perspective looking back, you have a very different pers perspective of that time than looking forward.